Welcome to Engineering Scale Models. I'm your host Jason and I do models. How is everyone doing today? We are looking at more of our CMOS Logic series, our CD chips, and today is CD4013 and it is a dual D type flip. Flop. Now, what is a dual type flip flop? Well, it the logic box looks like this. You have a output Q and an output Q, and this is the inverse of output Q. You have a clock signal. This is your clock, and then you have your D input. And the chip we're looking at also has a set and a reset. We're not going to be looking at those two. We're going to be looking at the D, the clock, the Q, and the complement of Q. And there's two of these on these chips. Let's take a look at the data sheet. Oh, I didn't move that around, did I? Let's take a look at the data sheet here not that that is what the circuit looks like here's the data sheet and this is the 4013b it's a dual type flip-flop um, it con contains two identical independent data type flip-flops each flip-flop has an independent data set reset and clock inputs and the Q and the inverse of Q. They can be used for shift uh, register applications, um, all that good stuff. It's a 14 pin um, dual inline package, what we have, and then um, between 5 and 15 volts. I believe it's 5 and 20 volts, but we're we'll using it 5 volts. Here is the logic diagram, a bunch of inverters. And um, you know you got the clock, the inverse clock um, set. We're not going to worry about. Here is your data. You also have your um, clock and your inverse of clock coming in the data, and that goes into a NAND gate into another NAND gate. So this is built basically with NAND gates and inverters which you only can make NAND gates with a CMOS chip you can't use any other type of um, other gates but the NAND gate is the way that goes so if we come down here to a pin output of it you got pin 1 up here that is your Q1 in the inverse of Q1 your clock 1, your reset, your D1 your set 1 and you have your ground in 14 is your um, 5 volts and then you have the same thing over here, Q2, inverse of Q2, clock 2, reset, D2, and set 2. So there's your two um, things. And then it explains what each one is. So channel 1 output, inverted channel 1 output, uh, clock input, reset, data, and set. And then you have VSS is ground and VDD is your power supply so that's your 14 pin output here so let's look at this diagram here this is how an actual D flip flop works not this particular one but this is the general principle of a D flip flop you have two um, NOR gates that their output goes into um, themselves and that their other input comes from two AND gates. Two of the AND gates are tied together to your clock signal, and I'm just using a square wave generator. And then you have your D input right here, and you have it going to an inverted signal on this AND gate, and a regular signal here. So if it's high here, it's high here and low here. So when the clock pulses high, this AND gate will trigger, which will allow this to go when it goes low. When the clock goes low, if this is 1 and this is 0, it'll stay latched. So we can see that here. So if I hold this down, 
it lights up and then I let go see it stays on for a second then I can press it again to keep it on it, trying to get it to latch again so as it comes on I can latch it there it's latched now this eye circuit gives me issues with latching but see it's latched and then when the clock dropped it unlatched so that's how a D style flip flop works I also have it drawn up over here so I want to save that okay let's go to the actual this is what it looks like in here same principle I have a clock and then I can wait for the clock cycle to latch it and it latches then I can keep it latched and then when the clock hits its cycle again it's going to unlatch it and reset the um, output so it can be used as a data type register so Better in there so that is the CD 4013 now I have a circuit here that I'm going to build but I had to build a clock circuit so here is a 555 timer and as you can see it is a clock circuit so this is in um, a stable mode so it blinks I can, can change the duration of the clock cycle make it blink faster and I can slow it down to its slowest point with this potentiometer so there now it's a slower clock cycle and that's what we're gonna need so I'm going to build up this circuit with this um, 4013, CD4013, here's the chip here, there's the chip right there, 4013, and we're going to get that built up and then I'll explain it. Okay folks, we are on page, or section 7 of the data sheet, because I just wanted to go over something with you because this D flip flop has a set and reset and I want to explain how that works um, it basically goes over an overview of what this device is which you can use it for data and memory hold functions including shift register applications um, to the Q inverse of Q and all that stuff and it says the um, it is a positively edged trigger device meaning that the logic level presents at the D input is transferred to the Q output during the positive going transition of the clock pulse. Setting or resetting is independent of the clock and is accomplished by a high level on the set or reset lines respectively. So you can technically use the set and reset pins if you put a high on those, a high on reset, it'll reset it. If you put a high on set, it will set um, the Q to high. But we, we don't want to use those functions. So if you look at this here, this is the function table. So if you look at a clock pulse of high and high and set is zero, low and reset is low, um, if data is low, you get a low output, an inverted one. But if the clock pulse hits and data is high, it'll latch a one and a zero on the output. Now, if you, um, if the clock goes down and both are zero, that's just whatever Q is, you'll get the inverse of Q. So, and then you can set, you can reset it, which will give you a zero on the out, high on the um, inverse in there. And if you set it without the, this is no clock pulse. 
If you hit the reset, you will get a um, one on the output and a zero on the inverted output. And if you set both reset and set to high, you'll get one on both of the outputs. But in our case, I tied both pins, um, pins four and six to ground. So there is zero input. So that would be zero and zero because we only want to use these two settings right here. So let's go back over to the camera here. So I have this set up here. This is our button. This is our circuit here. We have our 4013. We have our power coming into pin 14. We have our ground coming into pin 7. We have um, pin 1 going to our Q output. Pin 2 going to our inverse of Q output. We have pin 3 going to our clock I showed you a minute ago. Then we have our set pin tied low. And then we have our pin 5, which is our D, which is our input connected to the switch. And then we have pin 6, which is our reset, and that is tied low. And then again, ground is to ground. So if I turn this on, the clock, let me just get the clock up here. So the clock is pulsed. I'm going to see if I can do this with the clock in the shot. So you can see the clock is pulsing. And right now it is not latched, but if I hold this down, it latched. And then on the next clock pulse, it'll unlatch. So the information is on there in between a clock pulse. If I hold it down, it's going to stay latched no matter how many times the clock goes. But if I wait for the clock and I release it, it'll stay latched and then it'll reset on the next clock cycle. So if you're building a circuit where you can control the clock cycle, you can control how long the data is latched. So if you're building like a incremental clock that you can control when the clock cycle pulses, you can latch in information for a period of time. So that is how a 4013 um, chip works, CMOS chip. Um, I showed you the different gates that are involved in it and this is how it works. It has your two outputs. It does have a set and reset, but they're not being, I didn't use these in these um, scenarios. I could have set and reset them with other buttons, but at that point you have an SR latch. So these technically could be used as an SR latch and just ignore the clock input and the D input and you would have an SR latch. I'll go over SR latches in another video with another chip. But that's going to do it for this video. Thank you for watching. Here's my social media. You can visit my Patreon page for more information. Thank you so much and have a fantastic day.